Fine. So we are going to solve a particular problem in center of gravity and then we'll try to refresh some of the ideas which we have seen in the previous sessions. So the problem that we are going to take as of now is very simple. You have an object of this particular uh, thing that is given to you. You have to find out the center of gravity for the whole body. Okay. So what you can do is you can try to break down this whole object into a several small objects or several small regular objects and then we'll try to solve the problem. Okay, so this dirt has a rectangle. So this will be the first section that we are going to see your rectangular section and then this is actually a semicircular section. So this will be your second, I'm sorry, second one and this one is your triangular section. This is going to be your third one. Okay, so if you find out the center of gravity for your section one, which is rectangular in nature and then for your section two, which is semicircular in nature, uh, nature and then the third one which is your triangular section. So you find it out and then finally x bar is actually the algebraic sum of the product of your area into the respective center of gravity distance and then your divided and the denominator you're going to have the algebraic sum of the areas and similarly when you go for y bar the same formula will be repeated the only difference is you're going to have or you're going to consider the y coordinate right so without any further delay we'll get into the problem so this is what we are going to do so as i told you the first one you're going to consider the rectangle okay here it's very simple find out the area initially okay area is length into breadth so it is 100 into 50 and the calculation is very simple it is 5000 millimeter square and then your x1 distance okay so when you talk about this your center of gravity for this particular rectangle is located somewhere over here okay so how do you how we are, how is that you're going to fix the reference point so this is going to be my reference point we have discussed in the class session itself the reference point is fixed such that it is the lowest in the x as well as in the y component so this is going to be my reference point so it's from this reference point to this particular point so this is the value of x1 okay so which means it can be taken in two components from this reference to this particular line so if you see it over here you'll be able to calculate that if i minus 100 so this is 25 and then from this particular point to this particular point okay which is obviously your length divided by 2 which is 100 divided by 2 that is 50 so x1 will take a value of 25 plus 100 by 2 which is 50 so you're going to have a value of 75 mm i'll repeat x1 is the distance from this particular line to this particular center of gravity two components again from this particular line to this particular line is 25 from this line to the point of uh, center of gravity it is half of the length which is 100 divided by 2 you have 50 okay now this is done the next is you are going to calculate what is the value of y1 y1 it's very very simple which is the reference and your center of gravity so this is the value of y1 the total distance is known to you which is given over here 50 so the calculation is very simple 50 divided by 2 that is 25 mm right i hope i've made the point very clear to you and then i'll uh, upload this so which means you can also go ahead and then look into the calculations on your own fine now we have finished with the rectangular section next we are going to look into this semicircular section I told you in the previous session right so here before getting a look into how we are going to see into the formula and other stuffs, we'll just refer some previous notes that I have sent to you. So this particular uh, document I've already shared with you. You'll be able to note a point over here. The same semicircular section is given to you, but most importantly, you should note that the base is parallel to the x-axis. Please look over here, you'll be able to find it is parallel to the x-axis. 
when you have a semicircle such that the base is parallel to the x axis then if you see your x bar takes the value as 0 right similarly your y bar takes the value as 4r by 3 pi look over here this is the point where the centroid is being placed i'll just zoom in a little bit so this is where your centroid is getting placed right so here you have a x component but you will not be having a y component at all there is no distance between the y component please make a no bar is the distance between the base and the centroid okay there are two things that you have to note over here to the x-axis and y bar will be having a numerical value x bar is not going to be there the first one when you have a base lying parallel to the x-axis your x bar is equal to zero y bar is the distance between the base and the center point and for that they have given the value is 4r by 3 pi okay now we'll try to use the similar methodology for us also in this particular problem okay so if you see over here the base is parallel to the y-axis okay when you have a base parallel to the y-axis y bar is equal to zero right and then your x bar this is where your center of gravity will be lying and then your x bar for that particular instant is 4r by 3 pi again please refer to the notes that have, when you have a base parallel to the x your x bar will be equal to 0 and then your y bar is equal to 4r by 3 pi again a repetition y bar is the distance between the base and the centroid okay now when we are looking into this particular problem as i told you your center of gravity is located over here and then this is actually your value which is 4r by 3 pi okay so of course a1 you can calculate it very easily it's not going to be very complicated it is pi r square divided by 2 you can do the necessary calculations yourself but when it comes to x2 again what we have discussed in the class session is it is the distance between the reference point and the center of gravity so this distance your reference and the center of gravity is actually your x2 but what you know over here this is 4r by 3 pi so it is very easy for us to calculate the reference point and then this particular line they have a difference or the distance is 25 mm okay what we are required is the reference and the centroid so which means the whole distance minus this particular distance will give you the value so x2 is this distance that is from the reference to this particular line which is given as 25 minus between the centroid and this particular line that is 4r by 3 pi if you do the calculations you are going to get the answer in mm if I am so correct, the answer is going to be 14.4 mm. Similarly, y2. Your y bar will be equal to 0. But here, y2 will have some value. Right? Again, what is that value? This is the point where the center of gravity is going to act. This is the point where the center of gra gravity will be acting for this semicircle portion. So, the distance from the reference. So, this is your distance reference line. And this is your centroid point so this particular di uh, difference will tell you what is the value of y2 which is half of this 50 so it is 25 right and this is what it is given in this problem also so you calculate the value of a2 which is given to us in the problem it's easy you can calculate it on your own and then your x2 the distance between your reference and then your center of gravity which is your x2 but what you know is centroid and this particular line which is actually your base okay that is what i have been repeating from the beginning this distance is 4r by 3 pi between the base and the centroid but what you are doing is the other way around so which means it is the total distance 
minus the 4r by 3 pi value you get it as 14.4 and then your y2 which is obviously the distance from the reference to this particular point okay so which is half of this you have calculated it and then you have found out what is the value so with that we have completed two portions the last and the final one find out what is the related issue with respect to your last and final case which is your triangular portion okay so again before de uh, dealing with the triangular portion let us just try to refer the notes which i've shared with you so this is what i've shared with you for a triangular section you will be having a y bar as h by 3 okay so this is your y bar or let's say this is your centroid is given as h by 3 but your y component is not given to you in the problem okay it will be varying from each triangle to triangle let us get back to our problem and then we'll try to discuss in the larger picture so if we try to recollect how is that you're going to find out a centroid for a particular triangle it is actually the intersection point of all the lines that are dropped perpendicular from its side okay so you have side one you drop a perpendicular from this side such that it meets the end point of the other sides other two sides okay so side one i'm drawing a perpendicular such that it is meeting the end points of other two lines similarly draw it for this side two from side two i'm drawing a perpendicular such that it is meeting the end point of the other two sides again side 3 drawing a perpendicular such that it is meeting the end point of the other two lines so this intersection point is actually your centroid point so if you see to it that point is already given to you in the problem itself so this is your reference so from this particular reference value to this particular line where your centroid is being present so this is your x3 so which is 25 plus 50 plus another 25 that gives you a value of 100 mm so that is where your centroid is lying in the x-axis when you go to the y-axis it is h by 3 that is this particular component okay it is given as 50 over here so it is h by 3 but here this distance also has to be accounted again i'll get to the point this is your reference from the reference and then the distance to the centroid point so this is your sorry so which means this whole value which is given as 50 plus the distance between this particular two lines that is your centroid and then this base that is your h by 3 okay so put together you're going to get the value of y3 also and finally you find out the value of your centroid okay already we have discussed this in the previous session your x bar is the sum of the product of your area divided by the distance of the centroid i'm sorry into the i'll get back to that x bar is actually your sum of the products of the area and your distance between the centroid and divided by your sum of the areas in the case of your x and then if you just take it to your y coordinate you're going to get it for the x axis also so if you substitute all the values in these two sets of equations you're going to get it so what does it imply is this is your reference okay so if you travel 71.1 mm in the x axis so if you're going to travel 71.1 mm so this is where that particular value will be lying approximately 71.1 mm and then in the y axis 32.2 mm so this will be your 32.2 mm in the y axis right so this will actually be giving you the coordinates of a point which is 71.1 comma 32.2 mm so this point which is your x coordinate comma y coordinate that is your x coordinate and your y coordinate this particular point is the center of gravity for the whole object combined together right so before uh, finishing off this particular uh, session i have to make two things very clear to you first thing till date we have seen how to calculate your center of gravity for a regular object which is your rectangle 
when you your triangle as well as your semicircular portion one thing should be noted very carefully where the base is lying how the base is being uh, being present okay in our case the base is lying parallel to the y axis but how you calculated the 4r by 3 pi that is the main issue the distance between the centroid and the base that is 4r by 3 pi but what you need is the exact opposite so you have to take care and then look to it so with this particular note i'll just finish off with the class maybe in the later stage we'll try to deal with some more problems which will give a clear cut idea thank you